don't know. Oh, good evening, folks. How are you? We're at live. We were just talking about me having new glasses and bifocals. Okay. Snuck us on, didn't you? <laughs> I started it without realising I started it. So, <laughs> Rich, if we are live. <laughs> um, I, I know. I, I didn't even give us any warning this evening. It's going to be one of those. <laughs> so, good evening, everyone. How the devil are you? We hope you're well. Um, I do apologise for starting it early. Uh, we have the lovely Lorian, who is my co-host, who will be man in the chat. A uh, thank you to everyone who's come in, and of course, a huge thank you to Richard Felix, who has come here this evening to talk to us about something really exciting. If you're British, if you're not British, and you love British heritage, um, then we are talking about the Tower of London beheadings torture i know i shouldn't be smiling when i'm saying this <laughs> but it's, it's the gruesome history it's the macabre history that everybody loves and i can't deny it i'm i'm one of those you know torture beheadings incarceration they're all there so um richard good evening thank you for joining us hi um, how are we doing i think we just might as well hand right over to you to start oh really oh, talking God. about the town of london <laughs> Talk about. Yeah, well, OK. I mean, I hope, I hope we get some, you know, response from people out there and sort of ask questions and things as well. So because, uh, I mean, you see, the thing is that I, I get asked often when I'm doing these these me, me, me podcasts and me webinars and whatever you call them, you know, I keep asking, you know, what's what's the most haunted place that you've been to or, or well, you know, or what's the most haunted place in Britain? Uh, what's the most haunted place in the world? Um, and, and every every time I have to come back and say the Tower of London, um, we, you know, and it had. And funnily enough, a few few weeks ago, I was I was doing a, uh, another one of one. I said, "What do we call them? FaceTime lives? I call them. I don't know what. Uh, just what, you, what, is, yeah, what, yeah, what just, is it? We we just call them YouTube chat shows because that's 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 all we are. We we just call it the Ghost Voice Chat Show. Hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, well, well, anyway, so I, I never know what to call them. I, I every time my wife says to me, "Are you on the radio again tonight?" I said, "Well, not, not really, no." Oh. <laughs> so, uh, but I was doing one with with Steve. I was doing it with Steve Parsons and and um, Ron Kolek from 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 uh, America, um, and we were talking about the same thing about the most on. And, and and Steve says, "Well, you know, why why." Why do you say it's the most haunted place? You know, I said because it's well, it's got to be the oldest castle in England. And then Steve came back on as Steve would, as Steve does, and says, "Can we please give our apologies now to uh, I can't remember what he said, Chester Castle, such and such a castle, so and so castle, which is something like a thousand years older than the Tower of London." And I thought, oh, bloody hell, you know, I've made a mess up there. Yeah. And of course, because obviously they were. A lot of a lot of the castles were Roman yeah. castles. You know what I mean? Before, before. Mm -hmm. But I still, I still defend what I said because m most Norman castles, obviously when they were built, were wooden. Um, mm -hmm. Saxon castles, if, you know, because they, they built castles. Of course, you know, we had one in Derby, but it was only wood. And yeah. even, even when the Romans started out, they, they they were all wooden castles. And then if they if they decided to stay long enough, they'd pull they'd pull up the wooden the wooden posts and say, right, come on, we're going to build a stone one now instead, mm -hmm. which they did. Um, and so I presume presume I might be wrong that even the Tower of London, I would think, because it was built by William the First, William the Conqueror, uh, obviously to um, defend the Thames, the river, the, the you know the river crossing, and of course L London. Um, and there was just the one. It was the White Tower, which is the oldest bit. Um, and I presume when it was built that it was it was wooden, the first one. I don't know. I should know. I'm talking about talking about the history of the Tower of London. But, so I presume, like most Norman castles, it, it was uh, what they call the Mott and Bailey uh, wooden castle. And then very soon after, it was of course they uh, when R William realised he was staying. <laughs> <laughs> and they were they we weren't going to throw him out and defeat him uh they, they built a, a stone one um and so the same with with these, all these others so to me it's but of course it's the, it's where it is it's in the middle it's in the middle of london and and everything that went on that you know in london in the capital um had something to do i suppose with the tower of london started out so yeah. i suppose as a as a castle as a fort there it is look at that magna the white tower uh, and um soon became the, i suppose in a way the seat of government as well uh, for for william the conqueror 
And and then soon after that, of course, you, you obviously start taking prisoners, <laughs> for better, want of a better word, and, and br bringing them in and incarcerating them, interrogating them, um, executing them, torturing them, and, and everything else. Um, and so I still believe that, that more went on, and that's what the ghost side of it for me is. You know, the more trauma, uh, death, pain, anguish, torture, execution, death that, that takes place in a, in a building, then I believe that then, then that makes them even more haunted. And, and I don't care what anybody says. I, I still think that, that more happened at the Tower of London than, than, any, than anywhere else. I, I really do. Uh, I mean, OK, it's the most famous castle. Uh, it is, you know, but, but, but regardless yeah. of that, it still had more trauma than, than anywhere else. But, I mean, the fascinating thing about... Um, I mean, obviously, when William the Conqueror came... Um, he actually um, was very much against executing people, surprisingly enough. Even mm -hmm. though, I mean, he, I mean, let's face it, can you imagine what it must have been? I mean, you know, it must have been, for us then, must have been like the Nazi invasion of France. It must have been like the Nazis marching into Paris mm -hmm. you know, to, to have the Normans come here. And we did put up put up quite a fight obviously at the battle of hastings but even afterwards um and we actually sort of fortified london against william the conqueror so he actually was on a very sticky wicket for quite a long time he needed a castle um to defend to, to because you know the, the saxons we the brits were, were very much against being invaded it yeah. took a long time a long time before he subdued us completely yeah. um I think, like I mean, French it was actually, resistance. It was after 1066, wasn't it? And it was in the the, the actual the, the the White Castle here was built in something like uh, 1080. 1080, yeah, that's right. Like that, so yeah. he had. I mean, the first thing that happened was, you know, he had to lay siege to to London because the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Archbishop of York, came down, and and one of the uh, Saxon uh, descendants of mm, Edward Edward the Confessor, I think. All, all sort of fortified London, uh, but he he sort of he sur laid siege to it, and, and basically they ran out of food and and, and surrendered basically. Um, and then I would imagine that he probably built some form of fortification quite early after set, after 1066, which of course then became the magnificent what it is now Tower, Tower of London. Uh, yeah, was, but he was that's... still, funnily enough, quite opposed to. Um, to, not not torture, but certainly execution. And he actually, because I mean, we, before then we were obviously hanging people big time. It, that the Saxons introduced hanging um, into this country, just a rope thrown over the bow of a tree, you know, and then they hauled you up uh, and everything else, from throwing you off cliffs to uh, drowning you in a quagmire, <laughs> and, uh, beheading, and all, all sorts of stuff. But William actually all, almost did away with it, apart from. Uh, execution for if you if you rebelled against an, uh, the Normans, which is understandable, isn't it? I suppose. <laughs> um, uh, but other than that, his, his main I hate to say his main form of of punishment was um, oof, blinding and castration. Oh, uh, oh dear! So yeah, torture, big time. Um, but and then 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 obviously they started introducing uh, hanging back, in. but. Torture was always illegal in England, which I find absolutely unbelievable. We, did, like we didn't. We did it. Mm. Of course we did. But you know, you know, everybody goes to they go to the Tower of London. They go to uh, whatever Warwick Castle, whatever castle is. Everybody always searches for the torture chamber, mm. uh, and it's not right because they really <laughs> care for us. They didn't really have. A torture chamber. Um, they they tortured people. Of course they did, but it was actually it was illegal in England uh, to torture people. Um, and even the Tower of London, although they be, they believed there was obviously, of course there was an area where they tortured people, and it was um, uh, sort of a big barrel vaulted area underneath the White Tower, uh, right down below in the depths of the building, the dun the dungeons 
uh, obviously, I mean, they certainly, there's no doubt about it, they all had dungeons, obviously, for, 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 for putting people in prison, for want of them. But you see, the, you've got to remember in those days that people, people weren't, were only imprisoned until the trial. And then after the trial, the punishment. And the punishment in those days was not imprisonment. It was every anything from whipping at the cart's tail till your back be bloody, um, castration and blinding, um, branding. If you were a thief, then you were branded on the side of the cheek with a letter T. Oh, blimey, can you imagine that? Talk about that's yeah. an early form of CRB check, that is. Yeah. <laughs> you try going into a jewelry shop with a big letter T stamp on your face. Hi. Eh? Yeah, hang on, thief out. Yeah. Um, and and so imprisonment was didn't happen t really till properly till the eighteen hundreds. Before that, but of course there was imprisonment for special special people, for mm. kings and queens and and people that needed to be kept. And that's what the tower was very much for, you know, thrown into the Tower of London. But everyone thinks that being thrown into the Tower of London um, was thrown into a dungeon in the Tower of London. But, yeah. but they weren't. They had their own suite. They had their own servants that came in with them yeah. uh, to look after them uh, because it, it was a royal palace. Uh, and so yeah. people that... Um, I mean, for instance, you know, like King David of Scotland, who was captured, well, well more than one, I'd say, um, would be brought to the Tower of L and, and then put up put up there in... in but it's a bit like capturing somebody and, and taking them to the um, to, to the Savoy in London or the Ritz and putting them up there. That's it's quite a similar nice. thing. <laughs> they had their own suite, um, their own rooms. Sir Walter Raleigh uh, was imprisoned in the Tower of London for years. I mean, talk about one of our national heroes... Mm. imprisoned for years in the Tower of London before they beheaded him in the at the Tower of London. But he was actually, had his own suite, he had his own servants there, he had a, he had a gun, he was allowed out in the daytime to wander <laughs> and, and go visit. This is, I mean, because you realise how big the Tower is. It's, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a big, it's not just that one tower. You know, it was a big area with lots and lots of... Um, towers and, and, and rooms and cells and suites for people and all that sort of stuff. And so Walter Raleigh would go off and visit other people that were in prison there at the same time and go and have a, go, go have a cup of tea and a biscuit with them. Prison club. It's nuts. It's, nuts. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like modern day. It's like modern day prisons, isn't it? Waste yeah. of time. Well, yes. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not what people think because they've all watched yeah, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and and Sir Lancelot and Ivanhoe, and all you know what I mean. And it's all it's all dungeons and dungeons and dragons and, <laughs> and, 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 and torture chambers and and beheadings and, and and it's true. And of course there were beheadings, of course there were executions, of course there was torturing went on. But on the whole, it wasn't really like that. I mean, look yeah. at it. Look at the size of it. It's huge, I, 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 I don't think, looking at recently the pictures of the, the, the Duke of Edinburgh's uh, funeral, I don't think well, Windsor is absolutely massive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realise that. But how big they are. But again, same thing, the Tower of London. It's like a little village. Yeah. yeah to be is. quite honest with you, on the River Thames. But all those um, big towns that they've got in there, they used that's where they used to put the, the, the famous captives, isn't it? The famous prisoners, to have them on show. Yeah. Oh yeah, so but speak. again, they were not treated. Some were. I mean, come on, some were. I mean, I think the worst time, the worst things really was was during, well, during the, the what I refer to now as the the um, the English Inquisition, um, mm -hmm. which, which yeah, I I I did a one of the best things I've done ever. Actually, it was a, a four part uh, TV series called The Inquisition. Uh, on yesterday channel um, and it was all about the, the inquisition because everyone just thinks of the spanish inquisition but it's not it was it was all over europe uh and it was catholics um putting down everybody who was was going against the catholic faith slaughtering them burning them torturing them getting them to i mean big time you know thousands of people 
executed, thousands of people burnt alive, thousands of people tortured until they, they gave, told of other people, you know, confessed to doing this, told about the next door neighbour what they'd done and they were witches and they were heretics. And it was absolutely dreadful. And, and it didn't really touch us, funnily enough. Well, it wouldn't, would it? Because we we'd become Protestant. Um, yeah. And so we'd, we'd sort of uh, got not gone against the, the sort of the Catholic faith ourselves. We were all heretics. Uh, and that's why, you know, the, the, the Spanish and everybody wanted to uh, invade England when Queen Elizabeth w was on the throne bec because she was a heretic. She'd been excommunicated by the Pope um which meant she was going to go to hell and so you know but but all of a sudden of course when henry the eighth came and, and the, the whole religious thing started then we started our own inquisition because anybody that didn't go back from the catholic faith and didn't didn't become protestants were treated in the same way as actually we treated them um as they treated them abroad and that's when the tower of london really came into its uh, infamy, I think is the right word, because, um, you know, people that, that wouldn't become Protestants, Catholics, Thomas More, uh, oh, so many uh, ca Catholics, the Archbishops of Canterbury and various people stuck to the old faith, to the Catholic faith, and um, were brought to the Tower of London and tortured. And, and, Catholic, and then, of course, Mary Tudor comes on and she said, oh, by the way, we're all going back again. We're all going to be Catholics again. So all these Protestants have got to become Catholics and they wouldn't. And she burnt alive well over 300 uh, Madness, Protestants for heresy. Yeah. Um, it is. It's just, it is. And again, a lot of them were imprisoned in the Tower of London and, and tortured again. And then, whoa, hang on a minute, here we go again. Elizabeth comes yeah. on the throne. <laughs> and we are all going to change back again from, from, from Protestants from Catholics, we're going to be, well, we're all, by the way, boys and girls, we're going to be Protestants again now. Yeah. And then we had the big plots with all the Catholic pr priests and Spain uh, and France. And they're all, you know, Elizabeth has to be thrown off. She has to be murdered. Um, there has to be a Spanish invasion, the Armada. And all these Catholic priests were sent back over here. They, they fled, of course, to uh, France and Spain and what have you. Um, and then they all came back here in the same way as like the French, the French um, resistance, how we used to send spies over there to, to France, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was happening and they were encouraging the Catholic population to rebel against Elizabeth. So, of course, they introduced legal torture by a, gay, a guy called Norton, who became known as Rackmaster Norton, uh, mm -hmm. and he was a barrister. And he came up with some idea, some plan that basically made it legal if you were extracting information. Right. In other words, you know, yeah, you've come over here from so who did you come with? Mm -hmm. Where are they? What house? Mm -hmm. Who who put you up? Who who who? Where? What house were you hiding in? Um, yeah. Were they Catholic? Are they Catholic sympathisers? Uh, uh, and so, obviously, they wouldn't give the information away because, you see, <laughs> they were quite prepared to die for their faith. Yeah. Well, faith, faith was a, a stronger well, thing back then, I think. It, a much it was, it, thing. Yeah, it was your passport into heaven. Yeah. yeah. De de if you died for your faith, you, by Jove, you definitely got in through those pearly gates. Definitely. And, and so, that's, so, so the, there's only one way to get the information out of them. And that's yeah, yeah. Uh, torture, big time. And and to be honest with you, all that they had, all that they had in the town. So they did, of course, they tortured people in the Tower of London. Um, and um, the main the main um, weapon, for want of a better word, was the rack, of course, which they had. Uh, but they didn't they didn't have a full blown torture chamber with all manner of you know, <laughs> implements and thumb screws and and chains and and what's the, the all the stuff that they have abroad? With, you know, like the uh, the ball that they, they put you into and and roasted you in a, a huge metal uh, contraption like a ball. All all that they had, they had the rack, which was invented by a constable of the Tower of London. Would you believe? <laughs> uh, they also had the scavenger's daughter, 
which was like um, some not very nice sort of metal bars that went round your round your hands, round your legs, and it it crushed you and it, and it made you as the rack stretched you, mm. the scavenger's door to crushed you, and it yeah. pushed your 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 legs to your thighs, your thighs to your to, to your stomach, and your neck and your head to your stomach, and and they kept tightening it uh, until you were in, in a in a ball. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to and breathe, left would you? you there. Yeah. And that was also invented again by a constable of the Tower of London. <laughs> uh, I know. I've got an idea. They, they know. both they both came up with these wonderful forms of torture. Oh. And then the other one, of course, was was manacles, which was was just like a big pair of handcuffs. And they hung you up on the wall yeah. and just left you there with and if you can imagine what that did to your arms. But they, they reckon there was a guy called Thomas Gerard, who was one of the famous Catholic uh, traitors, um, that they reckon that when they, 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 they wrecked him so much that they actually stretched him by four inches. Wow. I mean, geez. And then would you believe after all of that? Because, I mean, as you can imagine then being taken back to your cell, uh, with your jo oh, I cannot. Your, your, your joints would be dis dislocated, mm. um, and you were you were literally stretched. And that man Oof. escaped from the Tower of London by abseiling off one of the towers, and and got over the river and escaped after being mm. racked not once because they they'd take you back and. Can you imagine they try and put your joints back in and things like that and leave you for a couple of days, right? So, right, now you know what it's all about. Mm. Um, are you going to tell us now where, where you came from, who you've been with, what the plans are? Uh, and no, no, he wouldn't tell. So they took him back, racked him again. Um, <coughs> it's just beyond, beyond anything. But he managed to somehow hold on to a rope and, and get himself all the way down. Oh, from this tower uh, over to the other side of the River Thames and escaped and was never caught. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Uh, another guy called Owen. Sorry? I was just going to say, it's mad that people would endure that for the sake of religion. Like you say, it's but, you're oh, going to have to. Yeah, yeah, but, but this, this is, you see, this is my, this is why my theory on the ghost bit, of course, is why so many people so many the, the, why the church or, or religion call it whichever, whichever you is is yeah. responsible for so many ghosts mm. because because yeah. they so in, you see one of the things i've said i'm, I'm not getting off the subject so i'm st staying with the tower as much as i can but mm. i mean religion well, there are so many religious ghosts think about it how many people see nuns yeah. and monks, monks yeah. and vicars and priests and tarts. No, no, not vicars and tarts. <laughs> but to, to tell me, and the reason the reason is because of all the religious turmoil that was going on in the sixteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth century, um, and and so you, you you've got these people that you know they were quite happy to die for the faith yeah. Yeah. because that ensured uh, they were a martyr and they were a saint and they they were. You know, St. Peter was going to open the gates for them. But dying is uh, one thing, like to be beheaded or to be executed, that's one thing. But to have that torture and just torture, keep, yeah, keep I agree with you. Yeah. How you could how you could endure yeah. that sort of, of agony. I mean, this guy called Nicholas Owen, who actually built, uh, his, he, he was a carpenter, and he actually created priest holes in uh -huh. many, many places around the country uh, to hide Catholic priests. And he was caught, yeah. taken to the tower, and he was uh, uh, he was manacled, hung up, and uh, apparently his he, he he developed this huge hernia, and he, and his his intestines burst out of his stomach. Oh, um, and he still would not. He died. He still wouldn't give in. He wouldn't t oh. say where where the where he built his priest holes. Um, it's just in, that, that in, is incredible, the test, isn't it? Yeah, that it's just incredible test. what yeah. people did, as you've just said, for their faith. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, I am probably I'm not a particularly religious person, but I, I say so often. Anybody that's that has faith, I say good good for you. 
<laughs> but, but 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 don't kill people because of it. <laughs> no, because no they've right. got a, because their their Santa Claus has got a green coat and you you've got a red one. Mm. Uh, but but I I do say well fantastic if you got the, to die for to to, to suffer yeah. torture like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I just find it absolutely um, incredible. So can't you un imagine why? how you know the tower of london is such a haunted place mm -hmm. um because it's it's it, it's got it's got a, it's got all the ingredients it's got yeah. <laughs> excuse me i mean number one it, it's it's i tell you what i don't know funnily enough i don't know what sort of stone it's made of i believe it was limestone limestone yeah, yeah. I, I don't know nice you, see, I mean, you know me and my state stone tape theory yeah. Um, you know, what well, sandstone, limestone, granite, clay, bricks, stock to clear, all you know, they all have that the ability because of the silica that's in them, uh, and the iron oxide, uh, to 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 hold a recording. So I believe and I always say that, you know, castles are huge stone tape recorders. Mm -hmm. And and so and the Tower of London, like all of the others, is is in my opinion a huge stone tape recorder that yeah. um holds memory uh re but that's the wrong word really recordings of trauma trauma and the amount of trauma that's gone on in the tower of london mm. uh both physical and mental um yeah. I it, was, it was local ragstone sorry it was it, it was local ragstone from ashford i think from what i can just what i'm just reading oh well done i've never heard yeah. of that but again, yeah, see, all, all stone, all stone, all yeah. stone contains silica, crystal silica, silica and, 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 and how, you know, is capable of, of holding a recording. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, the number of execution, I mean, you know, beheadings, I mean, as we were talked about a few minutes ago. Oh, so that's, that's Joyce saying what? Cane stone. Yeah. Mm. I have never heard of that. But of course, obviously, there's a reason why it's called the white tower i presume because i don't know that but interesting it's stuff. Stuff's coming out. This is good <laughs> yeah it's it's really it's painted white uh, is it i don't think it is no it i think it, be, i think it's the nature of the star i think it's the i think come on guys I'm tell us i'm watching uh, a video on uh, on youtube today uh, where, where i picked those pictures of the etching the, the oh the yes up, and apparently it used to be painted white which is why it was called the the, the white the white Tower, White tower. yeah. That's interesting. I wonder if there's still traces of the white paint. There's got to be some. Of course, I tell you, here's an interesting one. I'm not sure about this, uh, but certainly on the inside, on the inside, you, prisons, of course, were uh, after the after a certain period, they were all painted with lime wash, which was which, which of course was to kill the disease, because yeah. you see, jail fever was rife in in places like the tower of london and all places yeah. all prisons and everything like that and and they reckon that to a certain extent it, it stopped the spread of of the of, of of jail fever which was typhus so i just wonder but that's usually on the inside of a building yeah. not not on i don't know perhaps perhaps they don't know this, interesting this wasn't me, the tower, i've probably got my history wrong this it, is me was a zoo. it was the tower yeah. was a zoo yes indeed and would you believe there's a ghost of a bear that's seen at the tower of london is wow. there? Oh God, yes, yeah, a big brown, not a black bear, but a big brown bear, huge brown bear, um, was seen by more than one uh, of the uh, guards. I don't know which, whether it was the Grenadiers or the Scots Guards or which guard, one of the guards regiment on duty, uh, uh, in his sentry box, um, and was actually dozing because it's if you fall asleep, you know, you can be shot. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but certainly during wartime anyway um, but he was dozing and he sort of he, he wasn't asleep but he get, and all of a sudden he saw this huge <laughs> bear coming towards him and he actually because obviously they ha always have fixed bayonets when they're on guard duty he actually lunged at the bear and it cost, it cost it went straight through it and just hit, hit the wall at the side <laughs> he actually stabbed the wall and the same night, another guy, another guy on sentry duty saw the same apparition of a bear. And I was absolutely right, because it was a it was called a menagerie. 
uh, a zoo yeah. for, for quite a long time. Um, but you see, yeah. I that's an interesting one for me because, um, what's this, Kentish Ragstone for the main bit and Cane Stone for the white bit. There oh, we go. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that you get... <laughs> this is what we're going to start a, a storm here. I don't think you get ghosts of of many animals. Um, everybody will scream. Of course we do. I, my dog, my dog, my cat. My I, I know we get cats, dogs, and horses big time. But they've they've cohabited with us for twenty thousand years. That's mm -hmm. that's they're my, they're members of the family. But you you know I always say to me, you never heard of a, of a, a ghost badger, have you? Or or a, or a um, a ghost pig or you know or why why aren't abattoirs haunted mm. um by slaughtered animals you know i don't know why by the way I'm, I'm, but uh so my view on on this bear i think it's more like part of a recording mm. uh, for some reason some trauma that happened to that bear or something has caused yeah. caused possibility anyway this is uh, mm. of a recording mm. of the bear rather than the spirit and soul of the bear yeah, as, 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 much, as much as we celebrate these places, they are a place of torture and, and badness in in a se yeah. in well in essence, oh. and we we celebrate this history, which is kind of really weird we, that we celebrate torture and death. And even yeah, the zoo yeah. back back when it was a zoo would have not had that good of conditions. So oh like, no no no, you're so right. Like you're like so you said, right. it the imprint definitely. Yeah. yeah, in those days they'd have been. I mean, bear baiting, for instance. Yeah. You see, there you go. Who knows that you know bear baiting in pubs and uh, ale houses and stuff like that. Um, dog fighting, um, badger bait. Oh God, you know. I mean, we are, we are wicked. We really are. What we do to, 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 yeah. to animals. And who knows what what that bear might have gone through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. My, that, my grandfather was interesting. Told me my about granddad the bear story. was grenadier. And they told me that bear story. There you go. Yeah. You see. see everything. I everything I tell you is true. <laughs> what? Mm. Can you ask Richard? I'm reading these. If you can you ask Richard if he's ever applied for mission to film? Oh dear. Well, I've been thrown out of the Tower of London. <laughs> Not thrown when in. Most people get thrown in, but I was <laughs> honestly because I was. I, I obviously you know I do all these DVDs on sale at. Oh, shut up, Richard. Um, and. Um, I, I, we we did Ghosts of London, and I, it, it's a good one because I, I I did uh, Kensington Palace, Buckingham Palace, uh, not in. I didn't go in, <laughs> but yeah, from the outside. Mm. Uh, and, and I had I, I had to do the Tower of London, of course. So we went in with the cameraman, uh, and um, I, I spoke to the lady. Oh, we bought tickets. You know, I didn't get, I didn't get in touch with them and ask if I could do it. And I bought tickets at the, this box, and I said, "Is it all right if we do a little bit of filming inside?" She said, "Oh, of course, my love. Of course, you can." Not realizing that <laughs> that it's like with commercial, you. if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I, we did a bit. We got got round quite a bit, and then I was standing on Tower Green, <laughs> uh, where the where Anne Boleyn was beheaded, doing the story of Anne Boleyn. And all of a sudden, this beef eater comes up behind me. This yeoman warder comes up behind me and taps me on the shoulder on film and says, excuse me, sir, can I ask what you're doing? I said, yeah, yes, I'm just doing a bit of filming. It's uh, for educational uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. And he says, have you had permission? I said, yeah, I asked the lady at the ticket office. Yes. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. You have to come to the press office with me immediately. I said, well, I'm ever so sorry. I haven't got time. I've got, I've got, I've got an appointment with with uh, Jack the Ripper at Whitechapel in, in half an hour. So thank you very much. And off I went. And as I was walking away, he shouted at me, and there's no proof it's Anne Boleyn's ghost anyway. <laughs> and and we, we 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 hightailed it out of it. And had to finish it uh, outside. So uh, yeah, it's impossible to to mm -hmm. to, to do a because um, being a royal. You know, royal palace. Where yeah. It's yeah. impossible to get permission uh, to do a ghost program. That, yeah. That's and, and even any God only knows what they charge you uh, yeah. to do it, to do it properly. But I have got footage on Ghosts of London of filming inside the Tower of London. Uh, would you believe? Exhibit when got chucked out in the film. illegally, of course. Yeah, don't tell everyone. No, do tell everyone. I don't think they'll do anything to me now. 
Um, but it, <laughs> no. yeah, it, it is a fantastic. But I mean, as regards hauntings, it, it's just you know it, it's second to none because there are so so many stories, um, of accounts. You know that people, have, credible people, have said that's the big one. You see, credible people like gentleman said, you know, the grenadier guardsmen, and and you know they're not the sort of guys that are going to make up. No. Um, silly ghost stories. Yeah, you I know it, 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 it's real. Uh, yeah, there we go. See, that's what Corrine's just saying. Don't forget that bear baiting was a sport, even even during Elizabeth the first time. So you know yeah. that poor old bear could have been tortured to death, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but yeah, it, it's in, an incredible. You see, it's it's haunted by. I mean, the the best ghost story, of course, in the world, which is is it's you know everybody. If you ask anybody, what's the most famous ghost that haunts haunts the Tower of London? Anybody? Anybody out there? What's no. the most famous ghost of the Tower of London? It's, it's got to be Anne Boleyn because you've just yeah, Anne Boleyn. You hit the nail on the head. And I was like, and 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 guess what? She's, you see, this is actually added to what, because I use this all the time when I'm doing talks and this sort of stuff about, you know, you see, we always label the haunting with the most famous person. Yeah. Uh, always. You know, if, 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 if Florence Nightingale was in this, if a Victorian lady is seen in, in this house somewhere and, Vic, and Florence Nightingale had popped there for one, one night for tea with somebody, then it would be the ghost of Florence Nightingale. That was there. Yeah, and it, yeah. we always fall into the trap of doing that and it so does. it kind of romanticizes it yes it does yes it does uh, and so basically i always say to people well how do you know it's Anne Boleyn? would you recognize her if you would you recognize her with a head off would you recognize her with a head under her arm <laughs> would any of you would you any Definitely of you people, because i certainly <laughs> wouldn't recognize Anne Boleyn if i saw her no. right End of story. Even if paint, you know, I, I wouldn't know. I don't. But, and then everyone said, "Well, well, she was wearing a Tudor dress." I see. Yeah, but most mm -hmm. women, some blokes probably wore Tudor dresses <laughs> in Tudor times. Yeah. In other words, everybody wore Tudor dresses. So, how do you know it's Anne? And funnily enough, uh, only today when I was sort of looking up one or two bits and bobs for tonight, it, it actually says uh, an Anne Boleyn's ghost is always seen near the scene of uh, on Tower Green where she was. Where she was beheaded, she's always seen headless, and it's the dress that gives it away. Well, again, <laughs> how do you know it's Anne Boleyn's dress? Exactly, yeah. And, and the other, <laughs> exactly. Mm. Um, I'm sure. It, yeah. I'm sure she does haunt the place. Well, she haunts uh, Bickling Hall as well in 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 uh, Norfolk, uh, amongst other places. As so, I mean, hang on a minute. Uh, Mary Quinn Scott's haunts just about every place she ever went to. Yeah. Uh, and it's the yeah. same old story, you know. Oh, Mary yeah. Quinn Scott's was here, so it's her ghost. <clears throat> uh, but the only place she doesn't haunt is the place where she was executed. Mm. Bothering Gay Castle, which is quite strange, really, when you think about it. But yeah. so, back, back to Anne Boleyn. So, it's Anne Boleyn's ghost. Yeah, we, we don't know what she looks like. We know she's wearing a Tudor dress without a head on. Uh, so it must be Anne Boleyn. But the funny thing is that if anybody could have a decent death, she did. If there is such a thing as a decent beheading, because yeah. I don't think there is, to be quite honest. <laughs> <The queen. laughs> but is it... if, if they get it in one shot, then it's, you know, it's kind of a job well done, really. That she can That's what I'm on about. That's exactly yeah. what I'm on about, because, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It, it, it's not, it's not good. It really isn't. Um, and, You've got to remember that the executioner, right? Okay, executioner at the Tower of London. Well, number one, they didn't very. Most executioners were were actually the hangman. Yeah, they did everything. They mm -hmm. branded you. They whipped you at the cart's tail. They uh, beheaded you, and they hanged you. And oh, sorry, and they also hanged, drew, and quartered you. Um. Oh, <laughs> Not very often. So you've got to remember that even in the Tower of London, even in London, uh, I mean, they only had they had eight hanging days a year where really? they, they took everybody to Tyburn, which is where um, Marble Arches. 
uh, and and the hangings took place. And they, they used to have, they had what was called the triple tree. So it wasn't one gallows, it was three in a triangle. And they could hang up to 28 people at one time wow. on three carts. Because they, they always took you to the gallows on a, no, no trap door on a lever in those days. It's just, just a football goal, but three together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they took you, like the French Revolution, or in a cart. And, you know, as many as many as were going to be hanged would be taken in, in carts, like three carts. Yeah. And then you'd all be stood under one of the three beams. And then all three horses would be hit, whipped, and all the carts would go away. And you'd all be left there, kicking, writhing, choking, oh. vomiting, urinating. Stop! Some people may not have the the the, the tea yet, um, <laughs> and hanging hanging there like so much dirty dirty linen on on a on a, yeah. on a washing line, um, yes. and so that's where the hangings took place. Yeah. So there weren't. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm sure there were hangings at the tower, but I don't know of any hangings at the tower. But I'm sure it did happen. But what I'm trying to get through is that the executioner. Um. For the t well, I don't know whether they had a, an executioner for the tower. Because you see, the other thing is that it wasn't, although we think of it as being, it wasn't an everyday occurrence. Mm. Uh, it, but they weren't chopping kings and queens' heads off for every day, you know. No. Um, <laughs> you see, the only people that I know of that were actually beheaded inside the tower. That's on Tower Green, not not on Tower Green. Yeah, Tower Green inside, rather than Tower Hill outside, um, was was not many. It was was Lady Jane Grey, uh, Catherine Howard, one of Henry VIII's wives, uh, Anne Boleyn, uh, Margaret Salisbury, Salisbury, um, uh, Duchess of, not Duchess, uh, can't remember. Anyway, uh, Margaret Pole, but she was Lady Salisbury. Um, and Lady Jane Grey's husband. Um, they were almost royals. Most, well, they, were, they were. They were all... And they were beheaded inside the tower mm -hmm. because they were special, special people. They were kings mm -hmm. and queens or, or royalty, royalty, for want of a better word. Everybody else was actually beheaded outside on Tower Hill, which yeah. was just literally top of the hill. Uh, yeah. overlooking the tower um so what i'm trying to say is that the word the executioner wasn't doing it every day and so to take a head off in one blow isn't easy <laughs> that's the problem because you're not do, you're not well practiced at it you're not the, you know most of the time you've, you've been the hangman and yeah. and you got probably get quite good at that I don't know, <laughs> uh, but taking a head off. And the other problem you've got, I've said so often to people, is that you, you, mo most of the people, most of the people that were beheaded, because that was reserved for royalty and lords and ladies. That was the the humane way of, of executing you. Others were all either hanged or hanged, drawn and quartered for treason. But lords and ladies, kings and queens were beheaded, right? Um, and so you've also got the problem. You've got this guy who was actually, the, he's the executioner, but he was actually a condemned person himself. And he'd been offered the job to save his life. Oh, wow. So removed from the condemned cell or, you know, reprieved mm -hmm. and said, right, you can hang. Will you hang? The, yes. Yeah, I'll do it. Of course I'll do it. Yeah. Save yeah. my life. And by yeah. the way, you do know that you also occasionally got to behead people. And might be might be the occasional hanging from a quarter as well. You know, how are you with a with a butcher's cleaver and a knife? And oh dear. Um, and, then, and so you're the lowest of the low. You can't get much lower than than some some criminal that's you know been brought before or whatever and sentenced to death. But all of a sudden, you've got to behead one of your betters. Yeah, Lord so and so, the Queen. Yeah, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, Mary Queen of Scots. So, I mean, my God, you and I, I say to people so often, even today in this day of equality, if we were to 
to know we were going to meet Lord so and so this afternoon, or Lady so and so, or the Queen, or something like that, you'd be a bit nervous. A bit. Yeah. <laughs> what do I say? Do yeah. I uh, do I curtsy? Do I touch my forelock? Do I? Do, you know what I mean? Do I call her Your Majesty? Do I say Ma'am? Do I call him you, Your Grace? Do, you know what I mean? I must get it right. Nerves. So you imagine how nervous people were in the 1500s at having to chop the Queen's head off. Yeah. Now, what's the best way of curing <clears throat> nerves? Booze. Drink. Yeah. Drink. Yeah. Alcohol beforehand. So yeah. the chances of taking a head off in one blow, guys, is remote. Trust me. <laughs> um, and it, it was remote, I'm afraid. Um, it, it didn't happen very often. Um, Thomas Cromwell, Henry's henchman, had a terrible execution. Um, uh, the Duke of Monmouth, who was again imprisoned in the Tower of London um, and beheaded just to, uh, on Tower Hill, it took the execution of five blows to take his head off. Wow. He was still alive and conscious after the fourth blow. Um, just just beyond Mary, Queen of Scots, three blows, and then, then a knife to, to cut the last sinews of her neck, which mm. still was still, the head was still hanging from, from the block. Um, it, it, it's just not good. So anyway, so when Henry VIII decided that he was going to have uh, his beloved Anne Boleyn beheaded, mm. um, he knew what a botched job could be done of it. Mm. And the French, of course, used to behead people with a sword, not an axe. And uh, we still owned Calais in uh, 1530 something or other. And the French beheaded people with a sword, as did the Germans. And so Henry VIII brought the, the headsman of Calais over here to London, to the Tower, to um, behead Anne Boleyn with a sword. And, um, of course, you, you didn't kneel down and put your neck on the block. You knelt down with your neck up in the air. And the executioner... Ugh. Took a swing at you. Do you know what? I With think you. I would rather. Yeah, I think I would rather see it happen. You know, see the person get it. Oh. Can you, can you no. just imagine the the trauma, the terror, the, the I, I, anyway? Um, so Henry wanted to know if he could do a good job or not. So uh, the executioner said, "Bring me, bring me two felons from from out of your prison here at the tower, and he want one short and one tall." And he had the two of them stand together. And he took one blow and he took both heads off with one blow. Wow. He was good. He yeah. was good. <laughs> and so Henry was quite happy. <laughs> I don't know whether Anne Boleyn was, but uh, Henry was quite happy. So anyway, poor old Anne Boleyn was then brought out, you know, on, on the morning of her execution. Um, and uh, the sword was hidden underneath some um, some straw. She knew, she knew she was going to be beheaded with a sword. Mm. And she had to kneel uh, with her neck in the air and a, um, uh, you know, a, a blindfold uh, around her eyes. And he took her head off in one blow, which was, oh, Jesus. I, I, I just, you know. But can you imagine it, it, trying to, to keep still? Yeah. Can you imagine how you're shaking if you fainted? And as you went down, it took the top of your head off rather than, you know, oh, don't. Into the side of your head or your cheek or... Yeah. And it didn't happen all the time. All yeah. the time. Um, so, you know, but... How, so, in other words, what I'm saying is Anne Boleyn had a... A clean death, I suppose, is the answer. So, why would it be her that haunts... Tower Greek? See, I, I believe it's... it's uh, um, the Duchess of Salisbury. Uh, Lady Dame Margaret Pole who was also beheaded uh, at the tower and she was 78 years of age and she was the mother she was a, she was actually a direct descendant of the plantagenet kings she was royal uh, mm -hmm. and henry the eighth had her beheaded because her son was cardinal pole who was a catholic and actually when when um, mary bloody mary mary tudor took the throne she made Cardinal Pole, Archbishop of Canterbury. 
and he was very much against Henry VIII, but he'd fled to France. And so Henry grabbed his mum instead <laughs> and mm -hmm. locked her up in the tower. And after quite a spell in the Tower of London, um, suddenly decided to have her beheaded. And she came down. She was told she was listen, she was told on the morning, "Prepare yourself in an hour." Wow. Um, and she oh. came um, and said a few prayers. And she was a Catholic, of course, and knelt down, placed her neck on the block. And before the executioner raised the axe, she changed her mind. And she got up and ran off. <laughs> and the executioner chased her round and round Tower oh Green, God. hacking away at her till he, had to, till he killed her. Really? Yeah. Now, that's trauma. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's Dame mm. Margaret Pohl's ghost that, that is seen on them. Tower Green. That That's my view. Critical issues, yeah. I, I just cannot even imagine. <laughs> it had just seventy-eight year old woman. Um yeah. Royal is it royalty? Uh, hacked to pieces. Um no, it's not good. It's not good. I think it's her ghost. I'm sure of it. Uh then of course we have the the ghosts of the princes in the tower, of course. Yeah. King Ed, King Edward the Fifth. Funnily how funny. Barbara Lowe's just put that on the boys in the tower. <clears throat> She must be psychic. That's who um, I think of. When I think of hauntings at the tower, I think of these two. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Two little lads, you know. I mean, it's just, you know, the King of England. He was only a teenager, was only, you know. Yeah. But, of course, Richard the But Richard the Third had already, I didn't realise it, already had um, Henry the Sixth murdered in the Tower. Well, they believe it was him. Oh, really? They're not sure. But Henry the Sixth was murdered in the Tower of London. Uh, huh. by an unknown assailant but you know but then again you see poor old richard the thirds had a very bad press because he lost because mm. he was defeated at the battle of bosworth by by you know Hen who became henry the seventh um yeah. and history is always written by the victor so how bad richard the third really was i don't know but he gets labeled for it. any good murders at the tower of london it was, it was always richard yeah. the third that did it um, is it right that the royal family refused DNA tests on yes. the remains still. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I've so I've been told. Yes, yeah. which I find it's crazy uh, because you see they actually found they they found because um, they were imprisoned again in in the white in the white tower. No, they're not in the white tower. In the, oh, come on, Richard. Um, it was I think it was the bloody tower. Yeah, um, and yeah. Um, they were imprisoned there, and then they believe were smothered um, and just disappeared. Yeah. Um, and then years, years and years later, Victorian times, I think, uh, they found the remains of two skeletons, mm. but with animal skeletons with them as well, or animal bones, sorry, with them as well. But they believe they were both young boys. Yeah. Um, and um, they're buried in Westminster Abbey, of course. Mm. They yeah. took them and buried them in Westminster Abbey. So... Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's them. I think it's them. But the, these two lads, the two, two, the ghosts, have been both seen in white, white, white night shirts. Yeah. Hovering around the area of the of the bloody tower. Um. What's this? Would you suggest that the hauntings there would be considered intelligence or responsive, or do you think stone tape would be a better way to describe? I think it's both. I think it's the stone tape theory because it's a huge stone tape recorder that records yeah. tragic, traumatic events and death. But I also believe that there's um, uh, spirits and souls of dead people who haven't moved on because they're terrified to move on because some of them believe themselves to be sinners, felons. You know, I mean, um, that that's my view on it. Um, I'm sure of that. Um but I think it's both. Absolutely. Genuinely we've, believe we've, it's both. We've got some of the, the last graffitis that we were going to talk about. Uh, oh, let's. The yes. They're not great. Like I said, they've actually, they're screen grabbed from a, a video that I found on YouTube. So let's just pull them up a minute. Yeah, you know, yeah, some yeah. of the people that we're talking about, it could be these for all we know, you know? Yeah. So I don't uh, know. I love how tidy it all is. Some of it yeah. is so... Have you seen that picture of the guy that was an astro an astrologer? 
that, that's got this like chart that he's scratched into the walls of his prison cell. Okay. Um, there yeah. is honestly, there is some because I'm a I'm a great lover of of messages from the past mm -hmm. that have been left yeah. behind by yeah. people uh, in um, in my prison is full. You know, Derby Jail is full. The doors are full. Yeah, of, that door you just got amazing, isn't it? With the handprints on it. Oh, there's there's yeah. nine handprints on it. In fact, funnily amazing. enough, there is a handprint on one of the walls at the Tower of London. Wow! Someone uh, has scratched their handprint on the on the on the on the stone, of the wall of of, uh, <laughs> uh, of the prison. Um, no, you're not. Uh, some of it. I mean, they've left messages. They've left <laughs> poem poems and. and Oh, some of it is really. I mean, there's a really good tour. Uh, you know, the the Tower of London um, uh, wall tour. You know, the the graffiti tour. It, it's really fantastic. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I'm a one. huge believer in it. You know, they are the nearest thing we can get sometimes to people. Look at that. that is, I mean, look at it. Phenomenal. Thomas Roper, night and fifteen. Wow, that's time. Fifteen seventy. Who yeah, knows what that is. and it's still there. I mean, honestly, messages from the dead, isn't it? The effort they went to 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 make the, it. The, yeah, yeah. But of course, the thing is, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Some of them were there for a long time. You would be yeah. there for a long time to be able to do that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. The, <coughs> crazy. Excuse me. There's some really good ones as well from Catholic priests uh, yeah. that were tortured and then and then executed and then hanged, drawn and quartered yeah, uh, yeah. for high treason. Uh, from Does Richard believe that the more brutal the death, the more likely they are to come back and haunt? Yes, I think so. I think an awful lot of uh, hauntings are caused by trauma, uh, both residual, both stone tape theory and people that have, you know, uh, I mean, you know, body blown to pieces, no laid to rest for them. No uh -huh. Christian burial service, no family around the grave, no gravestone with your name on it, no laid to rest. No. Which then means if you're not at rest, you're abroad, you're around, you're a, you know, you're a tormented soul wandering the earth waiting for closure, as the Americans call it. Huge Absolutely. believer in that. Yeah. 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 I mean, so some of these names are just incredible. Um, it really is something. I mean, I, I've never. I've, I've been to the tower. I've been to the. I've obviously, I've been. I've been thrown out of the tower. But I've been to the <laughs> tower. Uh, and but I've never seen. I've never been, and seen. I must, you know, make a point of going back just, just to see the, the graffiti on the walls. Yeah, they've in got the, your in the cells. In the, when I say cells, you've got to remember that they they're not like prison cells. They're rooms, where people, yeah. you know, had fire, had a fire and. As I say, yeah. you know, the, the servants with them and things like that. You can see the crest on that one, even. Yeah, exactly. This this one says Frank Frank Owen, France France Owen, something like that. Yeah. Odell Odell maybe. Yeah. Isn't it marvellous? Phenomenal. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. Uh, they don't make enough of it. They should be no. advertising it. it. Should be a TV program, just about just been. about the graffiti was, at the Tower of London. There was a. Uh, I don't. <clears throat> It could have been a BBC programme where they went to the Tower of London and they actually done like a 15 minute segment on yeah. just some of the, the the famous people that had written on the walls. Like Anne Boleyn has left some writing on the walls in there and stuff like that. Wow, yeah. It's incredible. Incredible. I'll see if I can find it and I'll send you the link for it on um Sounds on good. If, 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 Yeah, there have been some there. good programmes on the Tower. And then of course Sir Walter Raleigh, of course. I mean he was he was actually sentenced to death by Queen Elizabeth originally. And yet he, you know, he was, you know, one of our greatest heroes for God's sake. Uh, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, all those people wouldn't have died died of cancer from smoking, would they? <laughs> and we wouldn't have had any potatoes. But I mean, he was, um, he, he he was, uh, you know, a, a national hero, uh, and then imprisoned again by uh, King James the First for high treason, uh, kept there for years, but again used to go around visiting people. Um, while he was in there, was beheaded, and they often see his ghost uh, on the battlements up above where, up above his his room, where his rooms were, uh, walking up and down the battlements, and then just disappearing. 
Uh, so you've got some famous, you know, and again, they, again, you know, how many people will recognise Sir Walter Raleigh? <laughs> I don't think I would. But uh, again, you know, it, it is in the area where his rooms were on the battlements above above his rooms, sort of thing. He had a he had a sort of a terrace on top of the, you know, on top on top of his rooms where he used to go out and exercise and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and then of course here's an incredible. Then we've got the ravens, of course, the incredible uh, stories yeah. about uh, the the ravens and if they ever leave the Tower of London. Um, the tower one, will one, collapse one, and England will England will fall. One went missing Apparently. recently, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. Missing, I don't know, I think, aren't they? Are they, they not meant to have six? And now we're down to five, I think, because they believe yeah. one died or something like that, yeah. Yeah. And look at the state of the country now. <laughs> <laughs> Quite get another Yeah, is that? No, and it can't get much worse, can it? But I tell mm -hmm. you an incredible story about because a guy that uh, plays a big part in, with, with me and Derby. Is a guy called John Flamsteed, who, because I, I think you probably know, I used to run a heritage centre in an old grammar school, uh, and John Flamsteed was the very first astronomer royal. Um, he he came up with with Greenwich Mean Time, uh, but it should have it should have gone through the centre of Derby, my place, because it's the centre of the country. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, King Charles the First um, commissioned him and and made him the first astronomer royal. Um, and gave him rooms in the White Tower, in the Tower of London, to set up his telescopes and astro astronomical equipment and everything else. And John Flamsteed complained about the ravens because he said the ravens flying round were were causing him problems with mapping with mapping the, the skies through his telescopes because they were getting in the way of his of his telescopes that were <laughs> looking at the stars and so king charles the second was going to have all of the ravens destroyed killed shot executed whatever yeah. until someone reminded him of the legend mm -hmm. of um of the tower of london and the ravens so Charles II changed his mind and because of that built John Flamsteed the Royal Observatory at Greenwich wow. and transferred him out of the Tower of London. Yeah. How about that? That's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's like Drake's Drum. I mean, obviously, yes. rally, because I'm from Plymouth, so it's all kind of history for me there. You've got Drake's Drum in Buckfast Abbey now. That if yeah. the drum ever goes missing or um, yeah. if the drum is played, then England will fall. It's yeah, that's that right. Yeah, on the day of doom of, of England, um, the drum will play, and obviously the ghosts will come back um, yeah. uh, of Drake in, in all all his kind of uh, monarchy. And I, I've actually got a relative who used to be uh, a, one of Drake's cohorts. Um, but anyway, wow. that's fine. If if the drum went, if the drum was beat, then mm -hmm. England would fall. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Similar thing. Incredible yeah, myths and legends of old England. It's incredible, isn't it? Incredible. Um, but the the history. But you see, I'm such a believer in you know that that you know just telling ghost stories alone is is, is not enough. It, it, no. You tie it with with history, and and Me the whole too, thing come, they come back to life. I suppose, for want of a better yeah. word, it, it 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 brings it alive and makes it. I think so much more fascinating. Uh, when you can, when you can tie in the ghost with the history, or the history with the ghost, whichever it happens to be. Yeah, I think I think it needs to be because we we think we're getting certain things, perhaps when we're investigating, and we could be just talking pie in the sky. That's the thing. If we can relate yeah. it to something, and we can get maybe certain information that is not widely known, then it could give that you know more provenance to prove that it is a certain. It's so story. much so. Person, so much yeah. so. Yeah, and that's what I, you know, that's what I try and do when, whenever I can, uh, you know, to tie the two together, because it's it's still not proof of ghosts. Exactly. But it certainly adds to the whole thing it's and makes it so much end. more credible, doesn't it? That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. No, fascinating. Fascinating yeah. subject. Do, really do we ever think they'll do ghost hunts in the in the Tower of London? I've tried, and they've turned and said, you know. A big fat no before. I don't think we'll ever get in there. Same thing, mode. same thing. Isn't it a yeah. shame? Isn't it a shame? Because it, for me, 
it has to be the the must do place to, to do it oh boy but they just wouldn't they wouldn't um, but what, it would be a sh why don't they let why not let a, a, I tell you what, no, here we go. You see, the problem I've got, be careful, Richard, here, but be careful, <laughs> most of these TV programmes, right, God forbid, they're, they're, they're all about entertainment, yeah? They're yeah. all about the scare factor. You know that, guys, as well. So it's all about, you know, running away, scared, screaming. Well, you're not going to let anybody um, into the Tower of London or any royal palace or any else. Uh, to do that sort of nonsense, yeah. you're not going to do it. But if they let me in, <laughs> if they let somebody in that's credible, that would, that, you know what I mean. That, that yeah. takes it with respect, yeah. sensible. If they, if they let uh, you so, in, yeah. me, me, Lillian, and Karina come in. Yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from, don't you? That, that yeah, yeah, doesn't absolutely. deal with it. Are oh, you scared? You know, you know. I mean, so many. Oh, I hate to care for it. So many of these. I hate to say it. Go. You see. People come on ghost hunts because they want to be scared. I know that. They love it. So most most of these people out there, ghost hunting groups, you know, dare you come on our event and all of that. So, you know, that's not what it's about. They're not there to get us. But we love that. Of course we do. And so all TV programmes, unfortunately, fall into the same... Um, same category. You know, it, it's got to be scare factor. And Joe Public loved that. I don't know, yeah. I understand it. You know, I, I'm I mean, not I, knocking I'll, it. I'll say it, I don't, because I've, I've got no ties to anybody. You know, if you've got the likes of um, Ghost Adventures and Most Haunted in there, and they have those people in, it's just going to ruin it. They'll just have them in once, and then that'll be done. Oh, with they would, no, exactly. That's the whole point. You're yeah. so right. Um, you know, I mean, I hate to say this, but you know, there are many, many places I know of that would never, ever let them back again. I can tell you this to you as well from for that from reason you see. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it, but but there is room, and I keep saying for a credible program, totally a, a, a documentary type yeah. program that explains to people what it's all about. So if we do have any documentary makers in here right now, um, we've had a lot of people in this evening, so it is possible. Who knows? You know. Get hold of Richard um, through his website and talk to Richard because that would be a phenomenal thing. Um, yeah. Not only would it make fantastic TV and you'd get probably most of the country watching and most of the world watching, um, there could be some real things done in there in, in some real proof, potentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I say real proof as far as we can prove the paranormal, but it could be something. So if, if you are a some type of production company... Yeah, get in touch with me, please. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Because there is potential. There's potential for a people. Tell you what it is. They, they, all these ghost programs, and especially most haunted, have created an awareness beyond anything of the paranormal. That's why we're here now. Yeah, we wouldn't be here now absolutely. if it wasn't for most haunted. So, I hate to say it, but thank you, most haunted, for what mm. you've done. But you're incredible. But there's there's room for a real ghost show that explains to people what it's all about. And there's so many different aspects to it. I mean, yeah. you know, battlefield ghosts, um, um, ghosts in the church, the stone tape theory, screaming yeah. skulls, harbingers of death, black dogs mm -hmm. and banshees. Yeah, a different pro, oh boy. And the Joe public want to know more. Yeah. That, that, because as you guys know only too well, the reality behind ghosts is actually far more fascinating than the Scooby-Doo stuff. Yeah. It is. And the thing is, is when people start to realise that there's real lives behind these ghosts, you know, real oh, people. That's, that's, they that's were fantastic. you and me once. Yeah. We will be them once, one day. You know, I mean, it's, that's right. They were human beings. Yeah. And they have a history <sighs> and a story exactly. to tell. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, it's all really and interesting. No better place to tell the story than the Tower of London. <laughs> Absolutely, could well, you imagine that? That would be incredible. Well, it would it would be beyond belief. It really would. Well, even yeah. if they just did like ghost tours in the evenings that they ran, that would be good enough yeah. for them, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, because they would bring in a fortune. Mm. Of course, they would. With one of the you know one of the beef eaters, for instance. I mean, do you know why they're called beef eaters? No. Uh, well, basically, uh, this is in Tudor times. There was uh, 
I think there was nine nine of them yeomen got in the in the daytime and six yeah. at night to, to to guard them. And they were to a certain extent like jailers, if you know what I mean. And they most people in those days, you know, existed on food was, was scraps, anything, you know, bread, the staple diet of, of the working man was, was bread. And they were given um, every day they had two pounds, two pounds in weight of meat, beef, lamb, and I can't remember, venison, beef, lamb and pork, I think, pork. But their main staple diet was beef. And <laughs> so they were referred to as beef eaters. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's about that. <laughs> Hardball, isn't it? So, folks, if you have any questions for Richard, now is the time to ask before we wrap this up because we're we're kind of it's, it's at ten past uh, nine already. Well, doesn't time, time fly when you have it? Yeah, fun. I know, I know. We, we could sit and talk about this for probably three hours, Richard. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, we can we can do it another time. What's Sorry, this from Diane? I know what cubic in the ladies is haunted at the Tower of London. There you <laughs> go. You see, because you see, there's another TV program, of course, Toilet Ghosts. Yeah. Really? You all know the number it is, of haunted it's toilets. Always the ghosts in the toilet, but then the rooms are always used they were always used for something different, weren't they? That's yeah. the thing. Of uh, course. Toilet. Yeah, remember that. It wasn't the toilet. No. It's the toilet now, but it wasn't then. It's all to do with energy and water again. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah, have to exactly. the outside of your, your window at yeah. point. Otherwise yeah. it was outside. Yeah. So there's a haunted I didn't know there was a haunted cubicle in the Tower of London. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have yeah, to get yeah. thrown up down in there, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's in the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's brilliant. Wait. So, do, you to, do, do you I believe, believe in mediums? Oh my goodness! Do I listen? People often ask me, "Do I believe in mediums?" And I have to say, "Well, I believe in ghosts." So, of course, I have to believe in mediums. Um, yeah. But I know full well that like in most professions and and games there's a lot of charlatans out there there's a lot of charlatans in the banking in the banking business for start amongst other things or the work but yeah of course i believe in mediums yes yeah yeah but so yeah there are always those that jump on the bandwagon that but i can see through them yeah. not literally but i can see through them because yeah because <laughs> no, they fall out. they fall into the same they fall into the trap of of yeah, enough, enough, Richard. But yeah, yeah I do believe yeah. in mediums. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, how come? How come ghosts are a few hundred years old, but not thousands? Do they fade away? Oh no! Purely and simply, it's because you know, like a question for you: Have you ever heard of the ghost of a caveman? No. Why? Because they had nothing to fear. When Christianity came on the scene two thousand years ago. It gave us everything to be terrified of and frightened of, and so we stayed behind because we're frightened of divine retribution, hellfire, and down. And in other words, the, the church created fear. All mm -hmm. religions, all religions use fear to control, it's control. And so the caveman, thousands mm -hmm. of years old, had no fear of divine retribution. He didn't, he didn't know about hell and all of that. So he worshipped that big, big orange thing in the sky that brought life. Yeah. yeah, that created life, that made the, the crops grow and and the gr grass grow and the animals get fed. You know, that was their god. They didn't have a yeah. god of. They weren't god fearing people. I I always remember the one that um, Karen uh, Bisson told me, and that was purgatory was made up in medieval time as a control um, for richer people to give to the the church so they're closer to to, to God to absolutely. <clears throat> They used to buy, they used to buy, uh, the, the church, the Catholic church bought condolences, sell, sold condolences. It's like, like buying a um, a book book token for, for Waterstones. <laughs> it, you, yeah. you bought condolences and you paid and you could buy them and that got you a quicker exit through purgatory. And wow. the more, uh, if you bought it, if you built a church, <laughs> and then paid a, oh then you'd get more condolences from from the from the church uh, and that would buy you a safe exit through purgatory uh which is just just the cheek of it beyond belief Not from it. Not. yeah money money for the church that's yeah. it money yeah. talks 
What programme is Richard currently filming? Right, I've just done, well, actually, last October, it's not come out yet because of COVID, I've done a, 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 another series on um, Yesterday Channel, and it's all about the Ark of the Covenant in, in Egypt, which is fascinating, really quite something. Um, the real Ark of the Covenant, where is it? Uh, what was it? Who's got it? <coughs> what happened to it? Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, I, we we filmed we were filming it in October last year, um, but it's it's not come out yet. So that's what that's that's coming soon on yesterday channel. Sorry, it's mm -hmm. actually being sold first of all to the American Discovery Channel, and then it's going to be then it's going to come out over here on yesterday channel. Soon, Do you know I hope. Say again. You don't know when? Do you know when it's coming out? No, I don't, because I've written, to be honest with you, since we filmed it in, in October, I haven't heard from them again. Because oh. <laughs> obviously everything went into lockdown again, you see, that's the yeah. trouble. Yeah. So, yeah. what's the just, age of the youngest the person one. killed in the Tower of London? It's got to be uh, uh, Richard of York, who was um, one of the two princes in the Tower. Mm -hmm. um, one was... I can't, cause, Wasn't one eight? He was about eight, and that was yeah, yeah. Uh, the Duke of York, um, which was always the you know the younger son of the king, um, and he was I think he was eight years of age and, and smothered yeah with his brother, as far as I know, as far as I know. Yeah, that's I mean that's that's what the stories go, aren't they? It's, it's so hard to know because you know writings that were put down at the time are kind of lost in translations yeah. through history change. So yeah, it's, yeah it's I mean, no. yeah, you see, yeah, you see, the thing is, we don't know three quarters of what happened, you know, because people, some people just didn't exist. There were no birth certificates, you see, or anything like that. Um, people were born and, and died with, without anybody even knowing about them sometimes. Murdered, yeah. executed, um, committed suicide without any, without anybody being known, you know. It would have been very easy, I would imagine, to murder people in those days and 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 get 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 away with it yeah as Definitely. as happened as happened with king king henry the sixth murdered in the tower of london nobody knows who by and and the princes in the tower yeah? yeah and they were royal they people knew about them craziness so yeah. you imagine the you know the the, the chambermaid or whatever you know absolutely yeah. you know done away with yeah Terrible, so, what what do you have coming up, Richard? In in terms of um, oh, well, as as things open again, as as the world yes. opens up again. Well, I'm just starting up again. With, uh, I, I had my second jab on Saturday, so I'm 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 clear in in in, in another two and a half weeks. Uh, I'm starting up. Ghost walks are starting again. I've got my first ghost walk on the seventeenth of seventeenth of May, a Derby City That's Centre ghost walk. Uh, and the first Derby Jail ghost walk is on the 22nd of May. And off I go. I'm off with those again. And then lots of taking lots of bookings, lots of bookings for people wanting to come and spend, you know, do a night vigil mm -hmm. in Derby Jail. Um, and you can find all the information on uh, richardfelix.co.uk. Um, Which is linked below, that, by the way, folks. Uh, sorry. And the, other, and the other thing we're doing, of course, we're just... Um, Oh, um, the DVDs, because I've done 47 DVDs, you know, Ghosts of Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Derbyshire, London, all, all you know, and, and they're, they're sort of, they've gone mad over the lockdown period, but we're just, try, we're, we're starting a new, a new shop uh, online where you can download it or buy the DVD. Oh, uh, or fantastic. both. With the time. Um, which, <laughs> and of course, that means they go around the world, because obviously some yeah. Someone in America, you know, the shit. I mean, funnily enough, I've just just sold a, a box set uh, to a guy that's on my FaceTime thing, <laughs> and um, you know, it, it's it was fifty seven pounds to send it, send the box set over to him. You God. know, so, but but yeah. if you download them, you can do it anywhere in the world. Perfect, yeah, yeah. free of charge. That's good. I might have to look at so, that. Yeah, working on various things. But one day, one day, if if anybody, if anybody realizes the potential there's room for a you know a, a ghost program i i'd like to call it the felix files with a story, hasn't it? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and telling the story of the real story of ghosts of what they are yeah. 
you know. Should I talk something. to Chris Stansfield again? I know it's been a long time since you filmed with him. Chris oh, Chris. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm trying to think which... um, it was, oh, I can't think what it was. It was a place in Devon by Buckfast Lee. Oh, that's right. Gosh, yeah. Um, I know you filmed with him there. That was really good. Of course, I filmed with, with um, oh, come on, Cornwall. What's his name? The lad that does the St. Ives Ghost Walk. And Ian Adicott. Ghost. Ian Adicott, yeah. Lovely yeah. guy. Really nice I've guy. I've not spoken to Ian for a long time either. Yeah. No. I yeah, he's, he's, he's on he's Ghost of Cornwall. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then I've got Chris. Chris, I can't remember his second name from uh, Gloucestershire uh, on uh, Ghosts of Gloucestershire. Chris, ha oh. Chris Howley? Yes, Chris Howley, yeah. Chris Howley's a lovely guy as well. He is a lovely guy, yeah, yeah. No, which is the good, much credible ghost hunters out there. There really are. Yeah, there are. There are. Yeah. It'd be good if you can, if you're back down this way, we'll book Pengas, as we said last year. I know. I know oh, friends. honest to God. Yeah, I love. I love penguins. I've never been back. So if, if, if you're back then back. to the end or whatever, then uh, yeah, let's, let's we'll do try it, and arrange it this time. Because I know it didn't work out last time, but um, no, let's let's let's, let's look at it, shall we? Yeah, love to. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Fantastic. So, folks, we're going to end it there. Uh, Richard, thank you so so much. It has it's been, been a pleasure. Incredibly fascinating. Loved um, it. Loved we, it. We, we, we've taken a higher number our highest number of views this evening so far as these concurrent viewers and we've had 160 people in chat which we've never done on this channel Woo! and thank Yay. you so so much it's been, it's been a pleasure loved it thank do it again you. anytime yeah well i would love to have you back about the stone tape theory at some point oh yeah if let's do it a little machine the silica and yeah like let's do it let's go into time. it in depth yeah absolutely yeah, I'm fascinated by that what we don't yeah, love to amazing so um Thank you to all in chat. There's too many of you to, to read out. We really do appreciate it. Do give it a thumbs up if you're able to. Uh, for Richard, show some appreciation for him taking time out of his evening to come and talk to us all. Um, we will get him back on in the future, as you've just heard. Um, maybe with some more haunted places. Who knows? Uh, there's lots coming up. We can certainly tell you that on the channel. Thank you to Lorian, who's done a fantastic job of manning the chat. To our mods, who have kept... All the numpties are uh, in chat. There's been a few in the chat this evening. Uh, thank you to them um, and for deleting them off the channel. We don't want the negativity here. Um, we will see you all next Monday with um, Justin Cowell from Paranormal Truth uh, for a very interesting conversation. And, yeah, have a great week. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you, Richard, again. Thank you, Gloria. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 Cheers.